Hello, my name is Patricia Holmes and I'm your Photoshop instructor and this is a video tutorial that's going to walk us through everything we need to do, know to complete chapter one. So first of all, go in this, this file, the start file is provided for you. Go into our class webpage, click, in chap click on the file link and find chapter one folder and you'll see the start video. I also provided the end video to show you what our end product should look like. It should be something very close to this. Um, it doesn't have to be exact to fulfill the learning outcomes, but it should be uh, very, very similar to this. Okay, let's get going. I'm going to walk you through step by step. And remember, you can pause and rewind this video as needed. First thing we're going to do once we have the start file open it is we're going to save it. We're going to rename it and we're going to save it. So go ahead and with Photoshop open, go File, Save As, and I saved it as Working Chapter 1 in my Photoshop folder. I'm going to hit Cancel because I already, I already named it. I already renamed it from the start file. The second thing we want to make sure is our toolbar is open. If for any reason this toolbar, which is our right hand uh, in the software, is not open, go to Window, and go down to the very bottom and click Tools. Make sure that's checked. Secondly, Layers. We need to have the Layers panel checked because we're going to be working with um, uh, layers simply holds an object. So for example, this layer is holding a photo. And if we add text to it, this layer will hold something. Now, this layer was provided for us, but it was blinded out. You can, you can look at layers and you can blind them. You can also drag layers up and down. So, um, for example, I'm going to unblind both of these. So if you drag this rose image on top, it covers everything. But if you drag it to the bottom, you can put things on it like text, etc. Okay, well, let's get going here. The first thing that we're going to notice, I'm going to go ahead and blind out this ribbon for now. First thing we're going to notice is that this picture is kind of dark, so let's lighten it. So we need to make sure we're on the photo layer to lighten the photo. And you're going to go to the very top here. You're going to go Image, Adjustments, and you're going to go to Brightness and Contrast. Now, I'm generally following the book, uh, and I know the book is optional. So um, just you can follow the steps along uh, what I do, which again is generally following the book. So the author is suggesting 98 uh, for brightness and 18 for contrast. And so I typed that in there. Um, you could manually use the sliders on that. So it's, it, it, it's got set back to zero, but you could slide this around and you could find whatever you see to be the right the right uh, color. So I'm going to put this back at zero or hit cancel. Okay, so we brightened it up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to unblind this banner and we're going to take a look at this ribbon and we'll, we see a nice blue happy birthday. We're going to kind of duplicate this ribbon and we're going to put a name on it. Happy birthday Patricia Holmes or happy birthday to whomever you want to write on there. It's not my birthday, by the way. I'm an August. <laughs> I'm an August person myself. Okay, let's get going. How do we do this? This is the fun part of Photoshop because what we're doing here is we're inadvertently learning the toolbar and creating at the same time. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here to our tool. We're going to click the second tool, which is the rectangle marquee. And I want to quickly point out the, there's a little small arrow on all these tools that implies a sub menu. But for now, we're going to use the rectangle tool. We're going to take our mouse. We're going to come over here. And let's come down here a little bit. And we're going to hold the mouse and drag a square. And we want the square to be roughly two inches by, let's make it a little wider, by about an inch and a quarter, which is 1.25, roughly in that area. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, so we're going to let go and you're going to see these little dots called marching ants. So now what we want to do is we want the color in this particular happy birthday ribbon to match this. But before I do it, I realize, oops, 
I didn't add a layer. So let's add a layer first. I'm going to deselect my marching ants. I'm going to come over to layer and I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to come over here to select and I'm going to hit deselect. Let's add a layer. This is a good opportunity for me to show you how to add a layer. Go down the very bottom right. You'll see a trash can icon directly next to it to the left. Click the little plus sign. That adds a layer. And we are going to call this layer banner. So if you click onto the if you click onto the text, you can rename it. Now we're going to come over here to our rectangle marquee. We are going to drag a I like I like to have a you know roughly about two, roughly about two inches by one and a quarter. Uh, let's just go with that. I want to try to keep this video short. Next, we're going to fill in this color. So how do we get this exact color? Come over here to the very top foremost color icon, which is the foreground box. Click it. And then look what happened. A dialog box opens up. In this eyedrop tool, you're going to click the eyedrop. It's going to take a sample, and it's going to populate this. Now this color is matching that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a paintbrush, click the paintbrush, come up here to the top menu of that paintbrush. Every time you click a tool, this top menu changes. And we're going to click a soft, which is opposite of hard, just click a soft brush and click fairly a large brush so we can just get a few big swipes and 95 is fine. Now what we're going to come over is we're going to come over here, we're going to make sure we're on the banner layer, and we're going to start painting. So take your mouse and fill in, but look, we it's not letting us go into onto the original photo because we have our own layer. If you did not have your own layer, you would be painting on top of the original photo. That's one good lesson on layers. So now with these marching ants, I'm done with it. I'm going to come over here to select, then I'm going to choose deselect. Next, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the third tool, which is the polygonal lasso tool. Click this one. And again, look up here. There's a menu. Right now, we're not going to do anything, but pick the poly lasso tool. Go up here to the very corner. Click. Hold your mouse down. Oops. Okay, I just messed up, which is perfect, because I want to show you how I can start over. Click Control-Z. That's not letting me do anything. This is awesome, because I want you to see this. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit the Enter bar. Now watch. Watch this. This is cool. Go to History. And in the History panel, which I just opened up, we can go up one each. We're going to hit... The, uh, there's the last one that we did and then there's the deselect from here we can pick up where we left off now I'm going to come back over here I'm going to pick the poly the poly polygonal lasso tool I'm going to click I'm going to hold my mouse down boy this just isn't cooperating with me today that's fine I'm going to hold my mouse down okay here we go Deselect. The third time is always the charm. Click. Ah, told you. Third time is the charm. Okay. Let go of your mouse. Now to do an angle to this corner. Let go of your mouse. Now draw <laughs> an angle. Now I, you know, normally I would want to edit these videos so you see that I don't make a mistake. But I'm glad I did make a mistake because I want to show you the history tool. Anyway. Once we get this selected, we're going to see how this banner is cut out. We're going to do we're going to do a cutout like this. Once it's selected, simply click the delete button on your keyboard. It's going to cut it out. And then we're going to deselect it. You can hit command D to deselect it. Now look at this. There's a line right here that's showing. This is awesome. I'm going to click the magnifying glass. I'm going to expand it a little bit. And I'm going to get my eraser tool out. Ah, the magic eraser tool. I'm going to make sure I have a pretty decent size eraser. 30 is a good size. See that? You can see now. 
And remember, since I'm on my own layer, I'm not going to affect the original image. I'm just going to clean this up super quickly like this. Click it and then come straight down. Life is good. All right. Awesome. Click save. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click the option button on my keyboard. I'm going to back out a little bit. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to add text onto this. You can add your name. We're going to match the text color with the yellow here. Uh, and Or you can, the author used the example of a lane. You can use a lane too. So let's make sure we always add a layer. Often when you click the text layer, it does it adds a layer for you. But when in doubt, add layers. I always say layers are free. Let's go ahead and come over here to the text tool, get a sample of that yellow. Click enter. Now we have yellow, we have text. Click on the text. Now look up here, we have a new text menu bar at the very top. Uh, let's see here what 72 is going to look like. And even if it's too big or too small, we're going to adjust it. So we're going to write in, I'm going to go ahead and type in Elaine. Boy, this is going to be big. And it's off, it's off the, the stage. That's fine. I'm going to move it in a second. But the first thing I want to do is I want to show you guys something. Come over here to the text, to text layer, double click that T. You just select it, your text, by double-clicking that T icon. Come over here to the size. Let's bump it down to 36. That looks about right. I'm going to use my Move tool. I'm going to move it over here. It's still a little bit too big. Double-click the T. We just selected it. Let's bump it to 30. That looks like it's going to work for us. I'm using my move tool, which is the cross, the very top icon, cross looking. Okay, that looks good. Now, the dealio here is that this text type font doesn't match this. So I'm going to come over here to window. I'm going to come into character. And this is going to show us all of our font options. We also have font options when we click the text here at the top. But I just wanted to show you this because I can see I have my capitals on. Uncapitalize it. And then let's let's find a different, really quickly, I'm trying to keep this video short. Let's find a different uh, font that we can live with. You know, I kind of like that. That's the Apple uh, Chancery font, 30 font. Okay, we're done. So guys, what, what you're going to do is you're going to click Save. You can go File, Save. Now, um, save the, this, the work in progress folder is called the PSD, but I want you to guys to save this as a JPEG because um, you are going to send this to me instead of a PSD file up here. I want you to come down here, choose JPEG, click save, and then send me that JPEG. You're going to click OK. And you're going to send me that JPEG because the JPEG is going to show me your work and it's also going to greatly condense the file size so you can send it to me easily. Guys, that concludes chapter one. Thank you so much for listening.